All right, and welcome back, everyone. Thanks again, JP. What are we up to this week? Talk a little bit about the Dawn spacecraft. Mm. Uh, we talked before about uh, Messenger, so I thought, you know, there's a lot of other, you know, everyone kind of knows about Curiosity and, like, the Hubble, so, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of spacecraft flying around out there. Maybe we can mm -hmm. talk about some of the other ones. Totally. So uh, Dawn is another of the NASA-JPL joint projects. I mean, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory out in California is uh, the crew who actually built the thing. Uh, and it was sent out to study Vesta and Ceres, the mm. two most massive objects in the asteroid belt. Uh, quick background note on Ceres, uh, you know, everyone bemoaned the fact that Pluto is no longer considered a planet. Well, it's worth noting that Ceres was once considered a planet mm. uh, when it was first discovered, uh, and it was quickly demoted, but it was there for, I believe, a few months at least, mm. and no one ever complains about Ceres <laughs> losing its planetary status. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they decided, planet or not, we should probably check it out. It seems pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, September 2007, they launched this thing out there. Uh, took a little bit of a while to get there. Finally arrived uh, in the vicinity of Vesta and entered orbit around uh, July 2011 uh, so they you know you'll see a lot of times with these smaller missions to keep things cheaper they kind of take the scenic route to get there mm. uh, just like messenger uh, so it arrived in July 2011 uh, hung out there for a while ended up leaving for Ceres uh, around the end of 2012 and uh, actually just arrived to Ceres in March 2015 so mm. only relatively recently uh, what's really cool about that is it's the first uh, spacecraft to orbit two extraterrestrial bodies. Ooh. So, like, you know, with plenty of stuff has orbited, for instance, the Earth and then the mm. Moon or Earth and then Mars. But nothing's ever orbited two different things that aren't Earth in the same mission before. Wow. Which, you, like, at first glance, like, no, that can't be right. But when you <laughs> think about it, it's like, oh, wait, no, you know, everything else is like moon flybys or, mm -hmm. you know, it makes a lot of sense. Wow. Like, it's, it's tough, tough to slow down. Yeah. That's cool. But, uh, you know, these things are a lot smaller, so I guess it works mm. out. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, typical, like I said, it took a little while to get there, passed by Mars on the way, got some nice images, got a chance to mm. kind of flex its uh, muscles and check out its instruments and all that good stuff. Is that a typical thing where, you know, um, as the spacecraft is heading out, they'll, they'll use something else that's passing by as a way of kind of testing out things? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in fact, if you look at New Horizons, they... Uh, got a lot of really great pictures of the Jupiter system as mm. it went by for its uh, gravity assist because mm. for one thing stuff doesn't go out there very often so it's always good to get more data mm -hmm. but also it's you know a lot of times these things are you know known what how they should behave and like so you can kind of compare the data you're getting back and uh. like okay everything everything's on track here uh, so you know most things will have some sort of gravity assist to save on fuel and most things will study that object while they're out there because you know they may as well it's yeah. free free mission to Mars <laughs> exactly uh, Vesta's kind of cool because uh, it's thought to be one of the last objects, like, you know, when they think about the four phase of the solar system where mm. planets are being formed, you know, these big rocks, these protoplanets kind of bon uh, bonking together and eventually turning into planets, they think Vesta is the last example of one of these things that's left over. Mm. Like, piece, like, piece of almost a planet that, you know, a whole bunch of Vestas would have gotten together and crunched together and became Mars or something like mm. that. And it just kind of, you know, won or lost, depending on how you want to think about it, and that it's the only one left. <laughs> wow, interesting. Uh, and so they've got a whole bunch of great maps of Vesta now at this mm. point. They managed to orbit it for a long time and to kind of study its composition and, you know, make measurements of what they think its core is made out of. So mm. that the core is something like monster, like 200-mile chunk wow. of iron or something like that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, these things are big. I mean, they're not... There's a reason they thought Ceres might be a planet. Mm, uh, yeah. So... Anyway, they moved on to Ceres. They've only been there for a little bit, so we've only kind of gotten uh, uh, preliminary findings. Mm. But I think one thing that's really captured everyone's attention are uh, the series of bright spots on Ceres. Yeah. Ceres. Have you guys seen this? Mm -hmm. Tell me about uh, it. Yeah, so they, uh, like, they'd like they seen kind of like a bright-ish area from like stuff like the Hubble before. But then they got closer, and they thought it was like a bright region. And it was like, oh, wow, like that white spot's not getting any bigger. It's not getting any bigger. It's not getting any bigger. And they just kept getting closer and closer, and it just got... To the point where it's like something, like it's so small that something is going to be really, really bright. And we've finally gotten some pretty high resolution photos of it. And it's like, whatever this is, it's right smack in the middle of this 80 wide, uh, 80 mile wide uh, crater. Mm. And it's just like bright white. And, you know, yeah. everyone's speculating, like, oh, it's like alien structures. <laughs> no, it's like, it's not like a 10 mile wide alien house. In this series. <laughs> but it's like, you know, it could be ice, it could be salt, it could be icy salt, it could be, you know. <laughs> um, but, 
in fact, I think it was only a couple of weeks ago they found out that uh, it's got kind of a hazy cover over it if you look in the right angle, ah. which is like, all right, well, that tells mm. us something. Like, something is probably coming out of this white spot, and, mm. like, you know, does that tell us, like, it can't be all that old because if it's outgassing, you know, it would have been gone by now, and, mm. you know, what is that gas? Is it going to be water? Is it going to be whatever? Mm. So it's just like <laughs> it, it really holds up to the idea that pretty much every single time we've gotten up close to some planetary, you know, some celestial body, for the first time, it's like something has completely and totally surprised us. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, we're pretty sure like this is going to be a big old asteroid and be round and find some craters. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, what the hell is this thing? Like, mm-hmm. Totally unexpected. And that's one thing I really love about these missions. And while I was so looking forward to New Horizons, which I'm sure mm-hmm. we'll talk about another time, it's just that it's like, you know, it's one, Pluto is one of the few things remaining where we can get a first, you know, Pluto, <laughs> Vesta, and Ceres, mm. some of the few significantly large item, uh, objects we can look at for the first time and be like, holy crap, what is going on here? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm kind of curious, the, the whole asteroid belt, that's, that's just confined to sort of one area, or is that, I, I, I mean, when, for, for people who are ignorant like me, um, <laughs> is there more than one asteroid belt, and how far out does this go, and... Uh, yeah. is it cause, uh, I'm wondering, is this a planet that just crumbled at some point in the past? Mm-hmm. Is there any theory how to this, how this asteroid belt came to be in this region and just didn't get pulled in or pushed out or. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so first thing to put, uh, to say is that, you know, I think a lot of people have this vision of the asteroid belt brought to you by star Wars where it's just mm, like yeah, this yeah. chaotic <laughs> mess asteroid of field rocks, more like a belt. Yeah. yeah. Rocks, rocks flying everywhere. Mm. And it's kind of like, no, it's not really like that. Mm. Like, you know, they send probes through the asteroid belt all the time. They don't mm. even look first. They just assume they're not going to hit anything. Mm. Uh, it's this pretty broad region between Mars and Jupiter that is, you know, populated by, you know, I, forget, I don't think anyone knows the number, but, mm. like, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of these rocks, basically, mm. uh, just kind of spread out. But it's like, again, space is big, especially yeah. with an orbit that big. So it's kind of like it's densely populated for space, but not, <laughs> like, in practical terms. Not going to run into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So, again, they go through that all the time, and they, no, they don't even, like, factor it into their calculations mm. of whether or not they could hit anything. Um, from what I understand, the uh, the reason they think that it, this is like this is uh, basically Jupiter is kind of a big bully in the solar system. Mm. Uh, it's got a lot of gravity. It has a lot of influence. Mm. Uh, so it's possible that what became the asteroid belt may have been, you know, attempting to form another inner planet, kind of like Mars and Earth and Venus and uh. Mercury. But like every time it tried to get stuff together, it would get co- kind of close to Jupiter and pull it apart again. And, mm. you know, just a little tug here, a little tug there. And also the fact that Jupiter tends to grab on to asteroids and fling them around, you know, uh. every once in a while could just know kind of break up whatever it was doing um so it's kind of an agitator for the attempt to build a planet yeah exactly i mean if you like jupiter does a lot of stuff like that like you know mm. it'll deflect asteroids it'll deflect comets and stuff like that hmm. so it's actually you know just it's just kind of like this crazy dude running around the room throwing everything <laughs> that's how I, how I think about jupiter uh now, I, yeah i mean you, you asked if it was only one mm. it's you can it's not quite the same but you can think about the kuiper belt as the same thing hmm. which is what new horizons is going to be studying soon uh, it's kind of like, uh, it's where they think a lot of comets and stuff comes from. Mm. It's uh, Pluto is what they call now a Kuiper Belt object. It's way out by the orbit of Pluto. Like, Pluto's like, kind of like an example of a closer one. Mm. Way out past Neptune, there's just, you know, a giant massive amount, uh, like a ring of, you know, kind of icy chunks of rock. And to be honest, I'm not totally sure what's out there. Mm. That's one reason they want to study it with New Horizons. Mm. Uh, and that goes out pretty far. Uh, and then on top of that is the Oort cloud, which is mm. much much bigger uh i've I've just read in fact i think this was on that wait but why article i read a great analogy for imagine if the orbit of neptune was a penny uh i forget exactly how big the kuiper belt would be but the oort cloud would be about as big as uh you know spaceship earth the big golf ball at epcot whoa yeah it goes about a third of the way to the next star and it's a full sphere okay so (sighs) it so that's kind of like the mother of all asteroid belts you see a lot of like you know Comets come from that when, like, another mm. star moves nearby and slightly nudges wow. them a little bit. And five million years later, something else comes diving into the solar system. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole crazy world out there. So, so would that be considered interstellar then, not in our, necessarily in our solar, solar system? Or is it... 
it kind of depends on how you define it. Mm. Uh, in fact, I, I like to joke that you know, for like five years in a row, every year they announce that Voyager has left the solar system because <laughs> yeah. they are using a different definition for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're doing stuff like, oh, hey, we've passed the heliopause. Uh, you know, the point where um, I believe the heliopause is like where our solar wind gets pushed back by the solar wind from other stars. Yeah. Or, you know, oh, we've passed this other arbitrary boundary or, you know, but, you know, it's still well within even the Kuiper belt, I think. So it's kind of like, you know, there are objects under the influence of the sun a third of the way to the next star. So Mm. you want to call that the solar system or (laughs) does that not count? Yeah, Yeah. I don't know. It's under influence. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So it's it's kind of a a little bit of an arbitrary thing since Mm. I guess it's not really all that important to nail it down for sure. But, you know, Mm. I guess that's how we end up with debates later. Like, hey, what's a planet? (laughs) Ah, it's round. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Now, uh, uh, when, when they're surveying uh, an asteroid, um, what uh, what can they find out about it? I mean, what are they actually looking for about the asteroid itself? So I don't know the uh, actual instruments they'd have on board sure. Dawn specifically, but a lot of these missions, obviously, you're going to have uh, some sort of science visual camera. Mm-hmm. So they'll have, for instance, uh, not don't think of like a typical like DSLR, <laughs> but rather you know, uh, an image sensor that can be tuned to a specific wavelength. And, mm. you know, they'll do stuff like, for instance, to get a color photo, they'll take three photos in red, green, and blue, uh-huh. and then kind of put them together later. That's the other thing we should talk about sometime, is that mm. all space photos are cheating. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, they'll also have stuff like they'll uh, probably be measuring the magnetic, uh, any magnetic uh, field around the area. They'll have radar to kind of scan the surface to get, you know, nice readings of like exactly what the surface looks like on like an altimeter level. Mm. Uh, they've got instruments, I think, again, a different type of radar. Uh, I know for sure Mercury, uh, Messenger had this where they can kind of probe beneath the surface and look for stuff like, hey, is there water here? Is there mm. iron here? Is there like some, are there organic molecules here? Or like, you know, what, what are you made out of? Mm. Um, and then just kind of like, you, you notice that a lot of different probes have kind of have their own quirky instrument on mm. their own. Like, you know, for instance, like I think New Horizons had some sort of dust counter, which isn't really mm. a typical thing. Uh, whereas I'm not sure off the top of my head what Don had, but mm. you know, those are the typical kind of things. You know, mostly they're after visuals and radar. Gotcha. Yeah. And now, of course, as we all know from reading science fiction, um, one of the big reasons that uh, asteroid belts are, are interesting from sort of a, a larger going to space perspective is the idea of uh, mining them for uh, metals and minerals and things along those lines. Uh, what have we learned about those asteroids that make them maybe more or less, you know, desirable for that uh, over these missions? So I'm not sure what, uh, what Dawn found, mm. but I mean, I will tell you that like, you know, it's definitely helps them kind of better categorize what types of asteroids are out there. Yeah. Like, you know, for instance, it's typically like you're going to see the type of asteroid that's a big chunk of iron. You're going to mm. see some that's like a big chunk of like, uh, what is it? Oh, I'm going to regret not remembering the name of this <laughs> on top of my head. But basically, just kind of a bunch of random chemicals kind of smooshed mm. together. That's where you'll find stuff like organic molecules, which, again, mm. don't don't come from life. They, you know, <laughs> Life needs these molecules to happen, but mm. just because they're around doesn't necessarily yeah. mean anything. Yeah. And stuff like ice. And, yeah, I mean, there are stuff like, you know, platinum out there. You mm. know, there's mm. trillions of dollars of platinum out Red in the Red dwarf system. mining system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but, I mean, there are two asteroid mining companies up and running mm. right now that are working on this stuff. No so, way, uh, really? Oh, yeah. And it's, Seriously? Yeah, it's a real cool, so maybe I'll save that one for another time, too. Totally. Yeah. But that's a, yeah. yeah, was it uh, Planetary Resources and uh, Deep Space Industries, that I That sounds say? right, I think, yeah. Um, but, yeah, those, those are, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a, I don't know, those guys are either going to be way ahead of their time in a good way or a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> Probably both. But, uh, yeah, right. but it's kind of like, it's kind of inevitable, I mean, the mm. idea of going out there and grabbing these things. Yeah. Now, I don't think we're ever going to be grabbing something on the scale of Vesta. But, sure. Uh, yeah, for sure, the stuff out there, and especially, like, you don't even need to go to the asteroid belt. You can kind of just look around, see, for, mm. look for one that's going to come a little close to Mar- uh, co- close to Earth and be like, hey, why don't you come on over Snag here? It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gra- just grab it. And then, you know, I think anyone familiar with Kerbal Space Program knows that scenario pretty well at this point. <laughs> like, oh, hey, grab this, put it in, er- or in orbit around the moon, or better yet, attach a bunch of parachutes to it and land it on Earth. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, nice. Probably not a realistic scenario on that one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know. You can always dream. Someday. <laughs> one thing that's kind of cool about Ceres I didn't realize is... Uh, it, uh, they're planning, you know, like I, I think we mentioned before, how usually at the end of these th- th- uh, missions they'll crash it into the target it's studying mm. uh, to prevent any debris from getting around or for prevent stuff like from like, you know, they don't want Earth bacteria landing on Enceladus and mm. starting life and then they find it later. <laughs> yeah. Not there in the first place. Yeah. Uh, but apparently Ceres is just gonna, uh, you know, um, Dawn is gonna orbit Ceres forever. It's wow. in this, a, a very stable orbit and they're just gonna leave it there. Wow. It's like, wow, that's that's new. <laughs> will, yeah. will it be able to sustain? I mean, is how long? 
could it transmit information from there? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about that. It is solar mm. pa- uh, powered. That's so good. Uh, it could so go a long time as long as everything stays functioning. Yeah, yeah so, like probably. I, I would imagine that it would run out of uh, maneuvering fuel at some point, mm. so it might have trouble keeping the proper attitude for transmitting, but it's yeah. probably also got gyroscopes to keep itself pointing in the right direction. So, mm-hmm. uh, most likely, though, they would just shut it down because it's expensive to keep talking uh, to a spacecraft like that. Yeah, and yeah. it's like at a certain point, they'd be like, look, guys, we got everything we need. Like, that's it. And <laughs> it's not like something super cool and that the public Outer really enjoys. Like, force. You know, <laughs> like, you know, like yeah. opportunity has been going forever. Yeah. And everyone likes it. And it's like, it's on the surface. So it's like, all right, fine. You have another extension. <laughs> but even that, you know, they've been talking about shutting it down, which mm. is crazy. But I think that's probably the biggest threat to Dawn at this point. Yeah. <laughs> the money. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's but, you know it seems crazy, but you know that money could be going to other probes. That's so true. It's not, it's true. Not, that's not totally newer, better, not totally depressing. <laughs> better yeah, probes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, maybe someday we'll send the new probe back to uh, uh, to Dawn to say hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll if it's we'll just a matter it. of listening, then you could just let it set in orbit, and then if we ever need to listen to it, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Every once in a while, I'm like hello, <laughs> <laughs> ping, <laughs> still, still going. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you in twenty years. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Interesting. Cool. Well, that is absolutely fascinating. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.